In today's video, I'm taking a Drexel buffet that I way overpaid for. Somebody spilled concrete down the front of it. I've got my hands full on this one. I want to turn it into a gorgeous masterpiece for my own home. Come along and see if I can make this flip work. Today's video sponsor is Patio Well. Patio Well reached out about providing us an 8x6 outdoor storage shed and it couldn't have come at a better time. I was ready to do a spring clean and see if I could finally park my car in the garage after all these years. It seemed an impossible task considering what my garage looked like, but Patio Well supplied the shed and off to work we went. Phoebe's out here overseeing all the construction. Patio Well's 8x6 storage shed came with clear instructions and it was easy to put together. My boys knocked this out in about 4 hours total. This metal shed is made of galvanized steel and is rust proof and UV resistant. It also has a black roof which was compliant with our HOA. The overlapping wall panels are waterproof and moisture proof and can be used in any weather condition. All products ship from the USA and they're usually at your house within 4-8 to eight business days. This 8x6 patio well shed had so much storage space inside and can store most of our tools like our lawnmowers, ladders, and other items to help me keep this garage space cleaned out so there's plenty of room for my furniture flips and my car. I can also hang the kids' bikes in the shed, which is going to be a huge space saver for us. I could not believe it when I shut the doors on this 8x6 patio well shed and then pulled my car into the garage. First time in three years. Be sure to visit the link in my description below to order your own patio well shed today. And now on to my flip. This 1960s Drexel buffet, I paid $150 for it at an auction, sight unseen. Let's just say that the pictures didn't mention the fact that someone poured a concrete-like substance all the way down the front of this piece. These pieces are really hard to find in my area, so I was afraid to tackle this project. It sat in my garage for over six months. Plus, it's something I'm creating for my own home, which I don't get to do very often. Finding the time to do pieces on my own just doesn't happen. So today's the day. Spring clean has come and it's time for me to finally flip this guy. I'm going to start by giving this a good clean with some simple green degreaser to get off all the dirt from sitting in my garage for so long. Plus, I'm going to see if this starts to dissolve whatever was poured down the front of this poor buffet. A little flipper's tip before I take this all apart, I like to label my drawers so I know where they go when I put it all back together. Drexel furniture usually has a mark on it from when it was made, and this one was no exception. August 29th, 1966.
And from the looks of the insides of this piece, it hasn't been vacuumed since 1966. I feel like this buffet is a bit like eating an elephant one bit at a time. And so I've made myself a punch list so I don't forget any of the steps that I need to do. And honestly, this project feels super overwhelming to me. There's a lot that needs to be done to this. And if I didn't want this for myself, I'm not so sure that I would have taken it on. Even though it's beautiful, I'm gonna have a lot of hours invested. So I don't know if I'm gonna get my return in the end, but it's for my house. So I want to take the extra time to do this right. When I have projects that are really big like this, I make myself a punch list and I give myself little goals to make sure that I come out to the garage and get one or two of those items done every day. And then that way it's not so super overwhelming. I can knock out two things a day on this piece. So let's get started. My simple green soaking off some of this was a complete failure. It didn't seem to help any. So then I went to town with my metal scrapers. And as you can see, it didn't really work either. I'm not making very good headway with these tools right here. So my husband Chris suggested that I try the sander since it's all wood. And I feel like I am maybe scraping it a little too much when I'm using these. I don't know what this stuff is, but it is not coming off very easily. Luckily, the top of this buffet is solid wood, so I took an 80 grit sanding disc to see if I could get any of this substance to come off. This buffet has a lot of gouges and deep scratches on it. I've got the squishy foam abrasive pad on my surf prep sander to get into all the curves and the edges. If you do any kind of furniture flipping or woodworking, the surf prep sander is a major time saver. If I didn't have this, I'd have to do all of this by hand. I decided that I wanted to take a little bit of a different direction with this one. I would like the top part to be like natural raw wood looking. So I am using, I don't see, know if you guys can see it on the video, but there's a line right here on this piece of trim work that I'm gonna use as like my line of demarcation. So I'm gonna sand everything down to that line. And then I think we're gonna paint the bottom part of it because there's so much damage on the bottom. Um, I don't think I can make it look like raw wood, but the top is in pretty decent shape. I made a huge mess with all the sanding that had to be done on this piece. So now it's time to clean it all off before we can start priming for paint. Before I go over it with my shellac, 
I'll use a tack cloth just to make sure I've done a really good job to get any of the dust and the dirt off because as soon as I spray my shellac on, it's set. So I don't want anything under there that is not meant to be there. On the top of this, I need to prevent bleed through, but I'm going to do a paint wash, so I can't use like a colored primer. So I'm going to be using Zinsser's shellac, which is clear. You can see it right there on the label. Um, this will allow me to stop any bleed through, any wood tannins or stains for coming through my paint wash and guarantee that I'm not gonna have any weird marks show up after I paint this. This buffet will most definitely have bleed through issues, so I'm going to paint the bottom, but before I can paint it, I'm going to be using a white primer on the bottom part, so I'm taping off the top part that I just worked really hard on to protect it from any overspray. I'll be using my white pigmented shellac primer from Sherwin-Williams on the bottom part of this piece. I load it into my gravity-fed HBL spray gun and off we go. I applied two full coats of my primer to the bottom and I'm doing a light scuff sand before I apply my paint. My second dilemma on this project, we got the concrete situation dealt with, but now I don't know what color to paint this. It's going in my house, so I'm trying to remember what colors are in that room and if I want this to be really bold or if I want it to just be more neutral. Right now I'm leaning in the neutral direction. I've got three colors of Lily Moon Opulent picked out that I think I wanna go with, but they're each just a little bit, have a little bit something to offer. So look at these with me and see what direction you would go. After much deliberation, I chose the color Dried Pompous in the Lily Moon Opulent Collection. I'll load this into my Gravity Fed HVLP spray gun with a little bit of water on the top and off we go. I get a lot of questions about my spray gun and the settings of my compressor. I went into all of that on another video and I'm going to link that below so you can check that out if you're curious. Also, this Lily Moon Opulent paint has a built-in top coat which is going to save me an extra step at the end. And with this buffet, I need all the extra steps saved that I can. time y'all we're gonna peel off this protective layer here and see what we've got left to work with we're almost done
Next steps to finish this up should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna do a paint wash on the top. I'm gonna show you all how to make a paint wash. I'm sure you've seen a lot of other creators do it at this point. It's basically just a mixture of paint and water. I'll probably start off with a 50-50 mixture, half paint, half water, equal parts, and then we'll see what I think and go from there. If you want the color to be darker, you add in more paint. If you want it to be lighter, you add in more water, and then you can wipe back as you go. The important thing about a paint wash is to not let it dry before you wipe it back. Um, and then what a paint wash will do for this surface, it's gonna take out the orange tones, which is really important, and it's gonna make the bottom look like it's a closer match to the top and not like they're two separate different uh, colors. When you're doing a paint wash, you'll make sure that you apply in the direction of the wood grain. I like to do little sections at a time so it makes sure it doesn't dry out and then wipe back as I go. To make sure that my lines stay nice and crisp between the paint wash and the paint, I'm going to put on some frog tape just to make sure I maintain that nice line of demarcation. I'll follow these same exact steps on the drawers. Next time I do this, I'll make sure that I put the drawers in the buffet or the dresser so that you can actually see what I'm doing without my head in the way. Sorry. Next, I freshened up the hardware with a little bit of champagne bronze spray paint. For the top of my buffet, I'm going to be using Lily Moon Stellar Shield just to make sure it has a little extra protection on top of that paint wash. And I'll apply that with my little sponge. You always want to make sure that your sponge is a little damp before you begin, but I love the Stellar Shield because you can clearly see where one line stops and where you need to start your next line. The painted bottom part has a built-in top coat, like I said before, but the top of this, since it's a paint wash, I wanted to make sure it had extra protection and it is a buffet, so it's going to be used a lot on the top. So the Lily Moon Stellar Shield will just make sure that I don't have any watermarks or other unneeded damage on here and add a nice layer of extra protection. Now it's time to add all the hardware back on. These little feet were missing from this piece when I bought it. I think it only still had two attached. I found some matching ones on Amazon, so now all the little feet on the bottom will be complete. Whew. 
Whew, this buffet was a lot of work. I can see why it sat in my garage for six months, but I'm so excited for you to see this finished product. It's exactly how I envisioned it for my home. I posted it on my Instagram page shortly after I finished it and had lots of inquiries, but this one is not for sale. She's all mine. What do you guys think of today's flip? Did I choose the right color for this one? Let me know in the comments below. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters. I look forward to chatting with you each and every week. If you want some more behind the scenes content, come find me over there. We'd love to have you join us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this video and I'll see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.